Good morning and good afternoon to everyone who are joining us from different parts of the world. I appreciate all of you for taking the time in registering for today's exciting webinar. Uh, the webinar today is going to be a joint presentation between eGrabber and Contact Science. And we're going to present some nice content for you, so please do make sure that you stay till the webinar, until the end of the webinar. We're going to have some nice, exciting offers for you as well. So I'd appreciate if you can all stay till the very end. All right, let me quickly go ahead and introduce to you the panelists for today's webinar. We have on panel Roger Hamilton. Roger is Vice President Sales and Marketing in Contact Science. Uh, not just a Vice President, but he is a, a leader in telephone prospecting and lead development. Welcome, Roger. Glad to be here. All right. Great. We also have on the panel today Clinton Rosario. Clinton is the product manager and chief software architect at eGrabber Incorporated. He's been the brains behind some of the great tools that eGrabber have developed and, and put on the market. Clinton, nice to have you on board as well. Thank you, Rich. All right, perfect. So the voice that you're hearing, that's me, your moderator, Rich Kumar. Uh, I've been working for about five years with eGrabber, and I've had uh, more than 1,000 customer training sessions with people who need training on programs. I'm glad to moderate today uh, the webinar. Okay, before we begin, and I hand over the webinar floor to Clinton, uh, here are some Twitter handles for you. If you would want to go ahead and tweet uh, to Roger, there's Roger's uh, Twitter handle, and then eGrabber's Twitter handle, and Clinton's as well. And if you have any questions, comments for us, please use the hashtag, hashtag eGrabberWebinar, and tweet about it, and we will be answering your questions on Twitter as well. If you do have any questions for us, please also feel free to use the questions box that's there on your GoToWebinar and type in your questions. We will be taking questions towards the end of the webinar, and I'd appreciate if you could use that um, and let us. All right. Let me uh, quickly go ahead and hand over the floor to Clinton. Clinton, it's all yours. Take it away. Thank you, Rich. So before we get into what we're going to learn in this webinar, uh, I'm going to step, step back a bit and uh, talk about cold calling. Uh, most of you who are on this call are either doing cold calling or managing a team which does cold calling, or you run a company which uh, does cold calling right now or will be doing cold calling sometime in the near future. So uh, what, are, what is needed when you start cold calling? Well, first, uh, you need to know who your prospect is. That is, you need to know which kind of company you're trying to call into, what industry, what demographics of the company. Plus, you need to know uh, what kind of uh, uh, hiring, man what kind of decision maker hierarchy you, you're going to call into. Maybe what's the persona of the decision maker? Uh, what kind of experience does that person have? Has he worked in manufacturing, etc., etc.? So once you know the the your ideal prospect and uh, you're going to target them, you will need the email and phone number to start off with. Well, phone number is good for cold calling, but why do you need an email nowadays? Well, there's enough research out there which points to um, the, more, uh, the more touch points you make, the more chances you have of closing that call. Anything between 5 to 8 plus, maybe up to 12 touch points is what you, was what going to have that, the email address and the phone which includes social media because face it we're in a in an age where social media is just one of the many channels you can use to get in touch with your prospect so you need to have uh, a strategy which says okay if they pick up the phone here's what I'm, what I'm gonna say to them if it goes to voicemail here's the voicemail script that I'm gonna leave if I'm sending them an email here's what I'm going to send to them uh, if I'm sharing something on social media, here's what I'm going to share. Or here's the type of content that I'm going to share with them. Here's how I'm going to nurture them and move forward. Once you have that, you, you have to actually send that email or you have to set up uh, what we call, what Roger likes to call, a pursuit plan. Because face it, nowadays you can, you're not going to make a sale in the first call. 
you'll have to build a relationship, a long-term relationship, which shows you, which shows them that you're in for the long run, that you're going to help them solve a business problem of theirs. So a pursuit plan is what's needed. And finally, once you have that all in place, go ahead, make that call, and use uh, intelligence that's available on the internet to uh, to build that relationship and to close that call. Now, well, we will. In this webinar, we will not have time to go through all these aspects, but okay, um, uh, Roger will be coming in, and that will be the bulk of this presentation. Uh, he'll be teaching you the best practices on how to set up that pers that pursuit plan, and how to how to do your telephone prospecting from there. Uh, how how you can go behind your prospect and make sure you get that sale. Uh, in the meantime, for the first 10 minutes, I'm going to be speaking about a tool which we have at eGrabber, which we develop for cold callers. Uh, it helps you find an email address and a phone number. So don't go away. So Roger will be on in a few minutes' time. Uh, and what is this tool I'm talking about? Well, you see, as cold callers, we all have uh, similar problems nowadays. Uh, we have, well, previously finding contacts was, was a problem, but now with so much social media out there, social profiles out there, you can find the name and the company of anybody in pretty much all the social media channels that there is. Uh, and let's say Google Plus or LinkedIn. Uh, let's take LinkedIn because a lot of people like to talk about LinkedIn nowadays. A lot of people like to prospect on LinkedIn. So on LinkedIn, you can easily do a search, find who you're looking for. But you're always missing the email address because you're not connecting to them. And you can, you can send a connection request. But the problem is if you send too many of them, and even LinkedIn will tell you this, they will, um, if too many people say that they don't know you, that they, and too many people reject your request, LinkedIn is going to block your account, and you're going to have to negotiate with them to get it back. So why they do this? Well, they do it for good reasons uh, of theirs. They want to prevent too many people from connecting to too many other people. Yeah, okay, I won't get into that. But uh, you cannot send too many connection requests which fail. So you're, you have a name and a company, great. You need an email, a phone number, and sometimes a full name. You don't even get their full name. Okay? So you're stuck here. And most of your prospecting operations stop here. Now, uh, if you're going from here to get an email address and phone number, I have a question for you. And this is a poll which I'm going to ask right now. How long does it take for you to find an email address and a phone number? And Rich, can you launch that poll, please? This poll will be up for another few seconds. If you go from a LinkedIn profile or a Google Plus profile, any social media profile, to find a name and a company, an email and a phone number, sorry, how long does it take you? And go ahead and click those options. You'll be closing the poll in another couple of seconds. Rich? and uh, we'll be sharing the results with you. Yes, between 1 to 15 minutes. So, so, so most people take about less than 30 minutes to find an email address and a phone number. Now, that's a lot of time. Think about it. Um, and uh, if you close the poll results, Rich, um, uh, you'll find that 30 minutes, well, you could be making maybe 29 different calls in the 30 minutes. Okay. So why it takes so long to find an email address and a phone number? Well, you need to go to the internet, go to Google, go to so many things you need to do. But can a software do that for you? And that's the kind of tool that we have created. We call it uh, the account researcher tool. So if you find a name in a company, wherever it is, you click one button and wait for a few seconds and you get this. A complete business card that you can use to call them, to email them, maybe like them on certain other social media networks and even get their full name in some cases. Now, how would you like that? A simple click and you get a full business card that you, can, that you can use. And the nice thing is, this business card is unlike anything else. Uh, some of the typical questions I get is, do you store this business card? Do you have every, everyone's business card on the internet? No, we do not have everyone's business card. We don't maintain a database. Why? Because people change jobs. Uh, things change every day. Why keep a database that's going to go old? So what we do is we find this information, the eGrab account researcher tool finds this information out on the internet and gives you a discovery trail. It means it points to the document among the trillions of documents out there that has this contact information out there. 
still don't believe me? Well, this is how it works. Uh, and this is a, a secret sauce of ours. Okay? Uh, a lot of people leave contact information out, the, out on the internet and uh, some of you might in inadvertently leave it on a slide share or something like that. Well, the expert researchers uh, can find contact information out, out on the internet. And what we have done is we've studied what they have done and we either find, we have taken all that and put it into a tool. So you have a tool which does all the best practices there. So you can either find contact information, email and phone number, or if it doesn't find it, what it looks at is it looks at patterns of email addresses on the internet, on that company, and projects one for you that you can use. And how accurate is this whole thing? Well, if the email address is on the internet, there's a 95 percent chance we're going to get it. Well, if it's not, we're three times faster at getting it than a human being. And just to prove a point, we went and got a patent on that. So that's what it does. It takes uh, the account researcher tool, you give it a name, <coughs> sorry, a name of a company, and you can get a full business card. <coughs> and the nice thing is, just for the sake of cold callers, we gave you an easy way that you can click and read about your prospects just before you call them. Uh, go to monitor information that's available there free on the internet, uh, a little note section to take notes while you call and finally once you're done with your call and you have all this information one click transfer straight into your favorite CRM now isn't that handy for a phone calling tool and the nice thing is okay now before I come to the slide I'm going to ask another quick question uh, which is your prime source for lead generation and there's going to be a poll coming up so which of those uh, five different sources is your prime source for lead generation you can go ahead and click that. We'll be closing this poll in another couple of seconds and showing it, sharing with you the results. Rich, can you share the results, please? Right, LinkedIn. By far. Good. Glad everyone's on the latest social network there is. And moving ahead, okay, uh, if you, well, in the, uh, in the case that LinkedIn is just one of your sources and if you have other sources out there, okay, no matter where your source is from, whether you have your leads in an Excel file, you can take your name and your company, put it inside the account researcher tool, okay. This is not a LinkedIn only tool, you, you can work on anywhere, you just need a name and a company, press a button and it finds the whole business card that you can use, okay. Uh, final bit before I hand over to Roger. Uh, how many times, okay, here's, here's another poll, how many times do you start your lead generation process with just the name of a company? That is, you've been given a set of accounts, you should follow and you should get the decision maker and then move ahead from there. How many times in your lead generation process do you do this? And a quick poll, I'm going to keep it for another two seconds. And Rich, can you share the results please? Oh, there's a mixed bag, and it's mostly, oh, well, that's, uh, in fact, uh, most people say that 8 out of 10 times, that's when they're starting with just a, a name of a company. Well, that's good, because if you're starting with just a name in a company, okay, and you're searching for the decision maker, typically you're going to take that company and you're going to search their website, search your networks, search Google, search so many places and waste between 10 to 15 minutes searching for the name and after that you just have a name you still don't have the contact information so knowing all that we made a very simple thing you can put in a company name into the account researcher tool and click one button and have the software do all these things and in less than 60 seconds it goes ahead and makes that list of decision makers that you can call out to that, that and, and it gives you enough information that you can go out and start talking to them and in case uh, you're, uh, you're the one who likes to qualify companies and read about them, well, typically here are all the different things that you would read about them before you even start talking to them. So the nice thing is all that's assembled very quickly into a company profile that you can also use, a nice little company profile card. Okay, that said, uh, before I hand it over to Roger, okay, I have a small offer to make. Okay. This tool is uh, typically what you see on screen. It's a uh, monthly at $80 and a yearly at 875 
and because you're on this webinar we're giving it to you at $280 off okay and club that with a $150 uh, support package and you have a $430 package on your hands a four hundred thirty dollar saving which you can claim if uh, you claim it before the 7th of April and the nice thing is Rich is also pasting uh, some links on the go to meeting chat okay so if you download from there uh, you know you can you can start claiming the, this thing and if you use a promo code and buy it it's very useful if you claim it before the 7th of April okay uh, that said I'm going to hand it over to Roger right now. Uh, and while the eGrabber tool can find online profiles, contact information for anybody, Roger is now going to show you how you can take all that that contact information and build in a pursuit, uh, a best practice uh, set of things that you can do after that. Roger? Thanks very much. I, I want to start off by thanking everybody for sharing some of your important time with us today. Uh, just briefly, what the information I'm about to share with you uh, is is been developed over the past 10 years with us working with companies and uh, calling teams and sales teams, and these are processes that we've developed that really work for for the companies. Uh, and with that, uh, let's get right into it um, for the next slide. And th this is the process. Uh, that the, the starts your revenue stream. Uh, I, I, arguably, one of the hardest processes in the sales field of sales. Uh, many people struggle with it, but you're going to make some dials, uh, you're going to hopefully get into some conversations, and you're going to set some appointments. But it, this is the process that starts your revenue stream. So it's vitally important to all of us. Uh, next. You know, we've been working with companies, as I said, for 10 years right now. And, we, you know, it's, it's part of the process that we've run into is that the appointment setting process uh, is not really uh, or as incorrectly viewed as a pure sales skill, similar to giving a sales presentation. Well, I will cover a little bit later why that's a little bit different uh, than a normal sales skill. It's radically different than, than selling in a presentation mode. Uh, and yet this business process has been one of the only processes, processes that's, that's not adequately been addressed, yet it starts our revenue stream. The other thing we'll be covering today is KPIs, our key performance indicators, metrics, if you will, uh, of a process that is not or has not been match, uh, benchmarked or tracked. Um, this is really the elephant in the sales bullpen uh, about how we are doing this, uh, how is it structured, are we improving our process, what are we doing. There's really been no reliable metrics to base our decisions on. Uh, next. Now, this this covers the fact it really doesn't it doesn't really matter where the information came from. You know, you you it could be a marketing lead, either hot or warm. You, you could be a networking lead, a referral, a social media contact, or you can be, indeed be calling from a call list. The idea is to pursue each one of these categories of targets with a well thought out best practice to improve your results. Go ahead next. So here are the main reasons, and if you'll think about this in your own situation, if you have one, this is really why we underperform or fail at this process. Many callers, even experienced callers, are not adequately trained or are not adequately skilled to know how to control a conversation when the decision maker answers. Um, and, and that's a skill I think we all need to work on. Uh, the next thing is how much effort and what is the right approach to pursue a decision maker? How many times should we call? What's our messaging? Uh, what's the spacing of these calls? This is the key elements of a best practice to get uh, a response uh, from your targets. And then uh, the once we've, ar we've already mentioned how to monitor, measure, and analyze and coach each rep to better performance through key performance indicators, metrics, vi viable metrics that's going to show how our process is working. And then the last part, if anybody that's ever telephone prospected out of a uh, customer relationship management tool uh, knows that it's very difficult, uh, it's very hard to uh, gain uh, rep adoption of the process. So how can we introduce a highly productive, high efficient process and so we can get the rep engaged in that process? Go ahead, do next. So when either they're looking at your current process or evaluating a new process, these are the three areas that you need to master 
to develop an, a, a, a world-class program. Uh, the what first is naturally the skills of the people that are on the phone. How, how inept are they at uh, getting involved in the conversations and turning those conversations uh, into an appointment? That's a very, very specific skill. Uh, people that are good at it are, are usually pretty successful and successful for life. The best practice is the second area that you need to work on. Think out beforehand. What is our pursuit plan of these targets? Whatever, wherever it came from, let's have a dedicated plan to pursuing these targets. The number of calls, the messaging, the spacing of the calls, the short-term pursuit, the long-term pursuit. You know you've went out on the research tool now. You've gotten a lot of great information. You have that information to pursue the target. It should be more than just one phone call. You know, you should really think out the, the, the pursuit plan on how you're going to pursue these folks now that you have that information in both short-term and long-term uh, uh, concepts. And of course, uh, the secret sauce that, that I represent is the navigation of that best practice. What tool are you going to use to keep this best practice organized and, and keep the records for you and measure your metri metrics uh, so you, you can develop a sustainable process for reaching out and finding new customers? Go ahead, next. And you'll have to bear with me today. I'm pressing through a lot of information. Um, and I certainly invite you to call me or send me an email if you would like to talk uh, in, uh, specifically about uh, any more of this information we're covering in a very short time. So I laid out the four reasons this, this, on, and the years next to it. The first one is the art, what to do when the decision maker answers. Then the best practice is how much effort and what's the right approach to pursue the decision maker. And then, of course, a tool to help us organize and efficiently execute this process. Next. All right, so here are the two ratios that mean something to you. You know, if you could track them, these ratios mean something to you and would, would, would help you evaluate your process. The first one is the efficiency, what we call efficiency ratio. That is, of all the dials I've made, how many conversations did I get into? In other words, that could be really evaluating your list. Maybe you've got a poor list, and that ratio is low. Maybe you've got a well-developed list, and that ratio is high. But this is the efficiency ratio that helps you monitor and improve your process. The next one, though, is the appointment ratio. That's really the sales effectiveness ratio. How well is our sales and sales management team uh, doing in converting those conversations into appointments? And if I got into 50 conversations, how many appointments did I get out of those 50 calls? That ratio is very important for you managing, coaching, and developing your team. It really is the ratio that's going to tell you the skill uh, that you're at and if you need to put uh, coaching and training in place to improve that ratio. Okay, next. So when I, get, when I talked about metrics, here's a sample of the metrics that we track automatically. The manager, the caller, the salesperson, has to do nothing. The tool itself measures these metrics. So I can look here and see that Peter Sellers, Sellers, Sellers spent about three hours and 40 minutes on the phone. He made 110 dials. He got into 17 conversations. Out of those 17 conversations, he set five appointments. Now those important ratios are already measured for you. The conversations to dollars ratio was 15%, and he was able to set 29% of his appointments from those conversations. So from this tool alone, you can gauge the viability of your list, your best practice, and the skills of your caller. Next. I'm going to run through this real quick. Take it to where the first line shows. All right, here's a rep. And here, that's all right, stop there. Here's a rep. Here's a rep that did $120,000. This is what the measuring of metrics can do for you. He did 120,000. You can either call that revenue or commissions. His average sale was $20,000. By the way, I'm backing into this number from the right. His average sale was $20,000. That means he had to make six sales. Now we know that his close ratio was 20%. Uh, he had 32 appointments. Close, close 20% of them, or six percent, or, or six new sales. That's how he got to his number. Now here's what metrics can do for you. When we start measuring these metrics, we knew that his appointment ratio was 15%. His conversation ratio was 8%. That means he made 12 dials a day uh, to get to that number. So how do we improve this process? 
So by concentrating on all three elements at once, very, very minor uh, improvements, we're going to do 40% more calls in the same amount of time. We're going to move our conversation ratio, we're going to move or improve our ratio from 8 to 10%, and we're going to improve our appointment ratio from 15 to 20%. All right, you can show that next, next slide. This is what that really means. Uh, I'm going to move my, from 12 calls to 17 calls a day. I'm going to move 8 to 8.8% 8 .8 in my conversations, and I'm going to improve 15% to 18% in my appointments ratio. And I can tell you, if you don't measure metrics, you'll never know or you'll never feel this improvement. It's impossible to, to notice this slide of an improvement if you're doing this in a random fashion or not doing metrics. Hold on. Go back one. So what is, what's the result of just working on those three areas in a very minor way? We were able to double or, or at least move our appointments from 32 to 59. We, we leave the ratio the same. The skills haven't improved for closing. Uh, he was able to double his sales, number of sales and double his revenue. Very, very modest modifications produce very dramatic results when you begin at the start of the sales cycle in this, this business development process. Okay, I'm ready. All right, so I've been talking about best practices. We've been working for 10 years in developing best practices. And this is why you should develop a well-thought-out best practice. When your callers are on the phone, it gives them the best and highest use of every dial. Well thought out pursuit plan. The dial is their basic resource. Make sure it's not wasted in a random way. Make sure you can pursue as many targets as possible and that each one of them uh, receives the appropriate pursuit attention. It speeds up the process. The caller does not have to think through this now. The caller is organized, can easily pursue each target in a disciplined way. Callers don't have to make a decision about what to do on each call or that matter for what, what steps do I need to do. If you build this out in advance, all this is done for them and it makes their job a lot more efficient and a lot more productive. And finally, the accountability. The ability to monitor, measure, and analyze and coach. You know, what Drucker famously said, what's measured improves. Well, now you can measure the activity, the efficiency, and effectiveness and coach your team and develop uh, a very, very, very good outbound approach to gaining new customers. Okay, next. All right, so th this graphically dem demonstrates what we would do in a, in a well thought out best practice. This is typically what a business to business best practice is. The, the thing you have to answer is, in the short term, I've got all this great information. What, how much of my resource of dials am I going to give up to get to that second diamond over there, which is the conversation? How many dials am I going to spend? Uh, because you only got so many dials in you. So you need to define this resource. Now, it could be three, four, or six. In this particular case, it's, it's going to be four attempts. And, and the, as you can see on the left there, we're going to wait five business days in between each attempt. Now, this first, e this first attempt might be a letter. You know, the first one a letter, then the second one a follow-up call. Or it could, it could be an email. The first step could be an email working down from the top and the second one a call. You can structure this pursuit in any way you want, but you really want to define this pursuit. Now, by executing a best practice like this and pursuing them with vibrant messaging, you earn the right at the last attempt to do what we call a move on best practice. Every customer we work with executes this best practice, and without fail, they all tell us that this best practice alone on the last attempt gets them the most return calls. And the reason is, uh, I'll, uh, let me get, go through the verbs and I'll get you the reason. Uh, you're going to tell them, hey, I'm going to stop calling you from, for now. You've noticed some activity. I realize this may not be a good time, so I'm not going to continue to call for now. However, if my messaging about whatever your core message is or have been of interest to you, I would certainly enjoy a short conversation with you. But if I don't hear from you this time, I'll reach out to you again in a few months. Well, most pursuits these days are random in nature. They're not well thought out. So a caller will get one or two or three dials into this and just say arbitrarily, hey, that's enough for this one. I'm going to move on to the next one. In, in, in a lot of cases, though, well, not a lot of cases, but in some cases, the messaging has created genuine interest. But, you know, our target's calendars are compact just like ours. And, and, and he, he, would, he probably was sitting there saying, you know, that is, I would like to start. I'm going to take his next call. Well, by randomly stopping, he doesn't realize that was your last call. 
So guys, if I can do anything on this, I would recommend you put this best, best practice in place. Develop some great messaging and develop a move-on message at the end of your pursuit. That will get you results. All right, uh, move on to the next one, please. Now here is maybe one of the most important slides as far as developing a territory, pursuing a list I will review today. The short-term best practice I just mentioned to you is in that dials category. Uh, and that's your four dials or five dials or whatever you design. And in likelihood, you're going to go through a lot of them with no contact. Well, have you learned anything to throw them off the sled? Now that you've got all this great information, doesn't it make sense to have a persistent, a long-term pursuit now that you have the right information? So, and, and keep in mind, our tool, it's called Clips, is going to automate this process for you. So if no contact, then we want them to recycle back into that same pursuit that we did before, either the cold call or if it came from a, a group of leads. So we're going to recycle it for a pursuit again a, 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 and then determine it uh, amount of time down the road. But, you know, that could be three months, whatever your best practice says. You can also get into a conversation with one of your targets or go out on an appointment or have an appointment with them. And for whatever reason, you cannot get them into the pipeline. Well, now you've got great information, and you, you started developing a relationship. Doesn't it make sense to recycle them to come back to you now that you've started this relationship? To recycle them to come back to you in three or six months or whenever, your, whatever your best practice is, in a follow-up cycle where the scripting is a lot more warmer in nature. Hey, we talked. And what I'm talking about here is disengaging. So if I go on a conversation, go on an appointment, and we can't get them into the pipeline, I disengage very professionally and get permission to call them back. Hey, I know we couldn't get, get you uh, in with us on this particular uh, uh, opportunity. Understand all the reasons, but listen, if there's one thing I know, things change over time. Do you mind if I call you several months from now just to check in with you to see if anything's changed in your environment? 99% of the people that you have a conversation with or have an appointment with will say yes to that. And now that you have that good information, and now that you started that relationship, you want a tool that's going to make sure, make sure that doesn't fall through the cracks and bring them back to you when you want for that next pursuit. That's where you start warming this cold calling stuff. You know, that second pursuit, that third pursuit, is going to be a lot warmer in nature than, than a cold call. Now, the, the, the third thing is that you may come across companies that you, you don't want to do business with. You have good business reasons why they're not suited for your business. In that case, you want a tool that will remove them and never let you load them in again. If you try to load another list in and it's uh, in your remove column where you've moved them for good business reasons, you need a tool that won't load them up so somebody will pursue that, that non-qualified lead again. But that's what, that, that's, what, uh, that's what you need to organize and develop both a short-term and a long-term pursuit process over time to start building warmth out there in the companies you're pursuing. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, this, this, if, you're in, if you're in a CRM, this is where actually where the pain starts. There are certain pre-call analysis things you have to do, and there are certain post-call. As a manager, I'd certainly want my team members to make a number six as often as possible, as long as they executed the best practice, did the pre-call and did the post-call. This navigation of these sequences is where the pain starts for the salesperson. They spend more time in the software than they do on the phone. All right, so the next slide, please. We come, to, we come to market as two screens and a mouse, um, and, and very efficient, very easy. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, so go on to the next slide. All right. Go back one. There. And, and forward one. If you're in a CRM, we integrate with most of the popular CRMs. So what we would, next slide, please. What we would recommend is you at least take a look at putting a process engine in front of your CRM to feed that CRM pipeline. The most efficient telephone prospecting business process you can do to fill that CRM pipeline. That's how we interact with CRMs to improve your CRM investment. All right, next, next, uh, next slide, please. All right. I'm, I'm just, this reiterates the fact that from this report now, 
you can judge the effectiveness and productivity of your uh, of your process. The list, the best practice, and your caller skills. Next, please. And this this demonstrates this again. Just refresh everybody. These are the sequence of activities we got to do. Go ahead. Next slide. We've benchmarked, we've benchmarked a lot, but here are three that we've benchmarked. What, what this demonstrates is I'm going to make uh, 10 calls in a row. I'm going to reach out to 10 companies in a row. And for the purposes of this benchmark, I'm not going to get into any conversations. I'm going to call. I'm going to leave a voicemail. I'm going to send an email with an attachment. I'm going to schedule the next call. I'm going to put that target away and bring up the next target. I'm going to pursue 10 targets in a row in exactly the same way. In a CRM, uh, like product, you've got hundreds of mice clicks, you've got dozens of screens, and you spent 45 minutes to nearly an hour to make those 10 calls. With a process engine like Cliffs, because you've thought through this process in advance, next slide please, 42 mouse clicks, 11 screens, 18 minutes to make those 10 calls. So to, to bring a target up, to leave a voicemail, send an email with an attachment, schedule the next call, put the target away, is three mouse clicks. You're actually making the process of doing your best practice, looking for some people to pick up the phone so you can have that, that chat with them. It's all that activity in between that weighs you down and slows down your process. Certainly invite anybody that wants to. We'll give you a free look at the tool if you let us know. All right, next slide, please. Here's an example. If you have a team, each, each team member has their own report. This is how you manage your team. Uh, according to their different skills, you can see all the ratios, all the numbers are there. Uh, uh, but but the, the reporting metrics process is, is very, very specific. Next, please. We also have integrated uh, three uh, telephone options, click-to-call options, if you will. One of them, uh, actually, when you get your CLIPS report where they had a conversation, it's hyperlinked, so you click on that that conversation link and it'll actually record the conversations that they've done to their to their prospects. Right, it makes it real easy now to have very good coaching sessions with your callers or your salespeople. All right, next. Again, what we're introducing here is a way to you to think through this best practice. And we're often actually a free way we're often to do that for you for free. Uh, to consult with us to think through this best practice process and then make this a sustainable part of your business. All right, next. Here's our usual fee for this. Um, um, we charge $990. If you have a CRM uh, that we integrate with, we charge $125 for the CRM integration piece. $290 setup. Uh, and then for training for, or for callers and managers is a one-time fee of $700. Uh, from, uh, uh, from the time they start making calls, it's $65 per month per, per caller. Uh, then the telephone, uh, the telephone options are listed below. But if you'll think back on this, guys, I don't know what the average of one sale is to you, but if you can improve your process by one or two sales, you will cover the cost of this program. The eGrabber promotion, we have reduced that down to $640. Basically, what we've done uh, for this webinar, the, what your, 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 your presence here at this webinar, is to cut that uh, training fee in half. So now you got a $640 option. I'll go ahead next. So what we'd like to do is invite you to take the first design, the first step in the in the formation formation of this for free. We'd like to help you get through your thought process of what is a great best practice for us. Now here's a little link, but let me tell you, if you go to our website, contact science.com and go to the up at the top, go to the additions and fees section, you'll see a place to sign up for the first step for free. You're going to get a great video that's going to talk to you about best practices and we're going to offer some of our time to give you uh, what you want. You can certainly ask questions, but we'll, the minimum we'll do is run through a return on investment calculation exercise with you and we will show you the tool uh, and what it can do for you. Now, once you take taken, once you, if you decide to move forward with us and invest with us, then uh, you'll go in and sign up for our proof of prospecting program, and using the promotion code Grabber, where you'll get that reduction in the fees. I think that's it. 
I want to thank everybody uh, for paying attention to me. Hopefully you hung around to the, to, to, to the end here. Uh, I certainly, if anybody would like to uh, uh, contact me and talk about best practices or what's working or what's not working, uh, be, be more than happy to, to have a great conversation with anybody. But uh, I want to thank everybody for their time. Uh, and I'm Roger Hampton signing off. Thanks. All right, great. Nice, Roger. Thank you so much for the great content. Uh, we see already a lot of tweets coming up uh, based on your uh, slides that you presented. Okay, uh, so that's some feedback for you, Roger, uh, live feedback. Okay, uh, so here is the webinar offer from eGrabber one more time for you on screen. And I'm going to paste in the links to download your trial again, just in case you've not tried it already. I'm pasting in the link to download the trial in case you want to go and sign up with the special offer today. There are links for you on your GoToMeeting chat, and you could go ahead and start downloading that right now. Okay, so please check your chat windows. You do have that information on your chat windows in your trial link, and, and it's a fully functional seven-day trial, of course. We're giving it to you, and you can go ahead and try playing with the program. We'd love to hear any feedback from you. If you do have any feedback for us, please send them over to me at rich at egrabber.com. And there's my contact info right there as well. So if you'd want to call me, send me an email, you're more than welcome to do that. I would be happy to uh, engage with you and answer any questions or help you in any which way I can. All right. So we'll be taking some questions now for both Roger and Clinton. If you have any questions at all, I'd appreciate if you do not raise your hand because this is not going to be a live uh, question and answer session. Please put in your questions on the questions box and I'll direct your questions to Roger or to uh, Clinton and we will then get your questions answered. All right, uh, here comes a question. Uh, Clinton, this is for you. Uh, does this program work on a Mac? Uh, the eGrabber program is a PC-based tool, uh, and I know a few of my customers who uh, use uh, Parallels on their Mac and then use the tools as well. Of course, this tool that you that we talked about, the Account Researcher tool, is a one-at-a-time tool. Okay, um, sometimes if, if you're looking for a batch processing, okay, a larger set, then uh, th those are available. And I've seen a lot of people using batch processing version on a Mac with uh, Parallels. So Parallels is something that you can put on and then you can run a Windows on top of the parallels and then you can put the software on top of that. So that's how it works. Rich? Uh, okay, great, great. Um, Clinton, here's another question for you. Uh, many a times we only have the starting point as a vertical and geography. Does your tool help with that? The tool is useful when you have a name and a company or you just have a company. As such, but if you are starting from a geography or an industry, uh, there are uh, websites out there which can help you uh, list those companies. Okay, because uh, try Zoom Info; they have a good company search, and if you go there, you can specify your geography. Is it a uh, specific uh, range of uh, zip codes? Is it a specific uh, metro city, or maybe specific? you know, zones inside USA or something, you can give your uh, criteria over there and it'll show you a list of companies which fall under that criteria. It's got some great filters, you should try it out. Uh, once you have the list of companies, you can put the company name into account research and it can find the decision maker and their contact information for you. And once you have the contact information, uh, contact Roger uh, and, he and uh, he'll help you out with the best practices, how to pursue that contact and uh, or maybe that whole set of, that whole geography you know, for a long term, uh, for a long term perspective. Rich? Yeah, great, nice. Uh, Roger, here's a question that I wanted to ask you personally. Now, you've shared some best practices with us. Um, would you be able to throw some more light as to how it benefited, you know, specifically for, you know, a company, and, you know, in terms of um, how much were they able to uh, cut down the time if they were make, if they were able to, uh, you know, uh, do some uh, quantitative analysis and, and, you know, how did how did it help them real time? Can you throw some light on that? I don't know if I understand the situation, but 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 
let, let me see if this would answer it. In terms of telephone prospecting and the mechanical activity uh, that it takes to execute a telephone best practice, we eliminate 85% of the mechanical actions that it takes to execute that best practice. In other words, uh, to, to make the phone call, to, to leave a voicemail, send an email, add an attachment, schedule the next call. Uh, we all do that because you build this out in advance uh, with three mouse clicks. Uh, so you know you, you can pursue at least twice, if not three or four times as many uh, prospects in, in the same amount of time and execute your best practice perfectly. Um, your, all your callers would be on the same best practice, executing that best practice. Uh, within the tool itself, there is also a one-click link, one link to, to that prospect, the person you're chasing uh, it, it, or pursuing, there's a one-click link to their LinkedIn profile. So if you want to go out there and research additional information, one click would take you to their LinkedIn profile if they're in LinkedIn. There is also a one-click uh, process to take you to their web page. So actually from the action page itself, you can go to their LinkedIn profile and you can go to their website with one click. And, and we recommend you do that on the first call. You wouldn't want to do that on the second or third call. Go there on the first call, do your research. If you, have, if you see anything that adds value to your pursuit, then copy it uh, and paste it into uh, the comment section of the, uh, of the account. That way it will be there for you to view every time you pursue them. But, but I hope that answers the question. Yeah, it does. Uh, thanks so much, Roger. Uh, Clinton, here are a couple of other questions for you. Okay. Now, how genuine are these results that you uh, get for uh, emails, phone numbers, and other information that you find on, on using the tool? The emails and the phone numbers are straight from the internet. It would be as genuine as you would search uh, as a as a normal human being. I mean, what would you do as a human being? You would, uh, if you were searching for the phone number, you would uh, search it. Look for a directory on the internet, maybe look at the company website, look for the contact us information. And if you're looking for the email, well, you, you'll try and put something in Google. You'll say uh, name of the person, name of the company, plus email. You, you'll do some search like that. And that's, the, that's what you do as a human being. So what the tool does, the tool does a lot of these things uh, you know, it in for you it doesn't in, because if you're doing it manually, you have to sometimes you have to do three, four, five searches. I mean, we saw in the polls that it takes between 15 to 30 minutes to um, to get that contact information. So the tool can do this really fast because it's, it's a software and it can assemble all that information for you. So it's as accurate as you would uh, get it as a human being. Ah, uh, okay. Well, here's another question for you, Clinton. Will the eGrabber account researcher tool work with LinkedIn Recruiter? The account researcher is not built uh, specifically for any particular website. It's not built for LinkedIn alone or Google Plus alone. Or, I mean, as long as from wherever you are on the internet, okay, or even from an Excel sheet or even from your CRM, if you have a name and a company and you press a button, this thing can uh, can can you know can capture the name of the company, okay, I can uh, and and it'll find that email address and the phone number. And once it's there, you press one more button and go straight to your CRM. Hope that answers the question, Rich. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it does. Um, so. Yeah, I don't see any more questions coming up for either Roger or for Clinton. Um, now, if you do have any questions for Roger or Clinton, uh, you could you know, send in an email to Roger. There's the uh, contact information for Roger on your screen. Okay? You could send an email to Roger or call him. And if you, need, uh, uh, if you have any questions for Clinton or for me, please use my contact information that's there on your screen and I would be able to get the answers you need for you. All right, let me quickly go ahead and take a look at one more time the questions to see if something else popped up. Nope, I think that's about it from everyone today. Um, thank you, Clinton. Thank you, Roger, for joining us and making this presentation yet another successful one. I'm sure there's lots of information that went out that people are going to use, and um, I do hope that uh, Roger would be able to um, you know, connect with some of them as well. Thanks, Roger, again. Thanks, Clinton. Have a good day, everyone. Bye now.